Good evening and welcome to a special assignment. I'm Ashraf Garda. Tonight we bring you another expose of terminally ill inmates in our prisons desperately trying to get out on medical parole. But do the rules around medical parole apply equally to all sick inmates? The story by producer Adelpha Niekerk. Sent to prison an innocent man for a crime he did not commit. But are prisons breeding grounds for deathly diseases that show no mercy to its captives? After desperate attempts failed to get medical parole, Bobby's only way out was to appeal his sentence. But his freedom did not last long. Bobby was sent to prison to go and die, and that is not supposed to happen. Does proper medical treatment for convicted criminals favor the well-known? And is medical parole meant mainly for the well-connected? While others fight for their lives in overcrowded jails that have become death traps. A family in mourning. Bobby Le Peng's family struggled to let go. The story of Bobby Le Peng's final years is a tragic tale of a string of misunderstandings that ended up here. It's the story of an innocent man that got caught up in false accusations and got trapped in a prison system that shows little mercy to the sick. Bobby's mother struggles to come to terms with the ironic twist of fate that ended the life of her son. And an entire family hoped to get answers. It's hurting. What can I say to you? It's hurting. And we have to come ourselves because we didn't even get any counselling. We didn't get any counselling up to now. We're just trying to come our, um, ourselves. Even church people, they calm us down. What? In 2006, Bobby was involved in a domestic dispute. But when police arrived at his home, they discovered a gun hidden behind a TV set. Bobby insisted he knew nothing about the existence of the gun. His pleas fell on deaf ears. After a drawn-out court case, the domestic charges against Bobby were dropped. But in 2006, he was convicted and sent to the Pretoria Central Prison for the illegal possession of a firearm. Like the prisoners shown in this footage, Bobby now had to survive in overcrowded conditions with sick inmates. He too soon fell sick. He was very ill, Ada. Very, very ill. Because by that time he went there, he was losing the speech. You could feel, you couldn't hear him what he was saying. If, if you want to hear him, he was being nearer his, his mouth, you know. He couldn't speak, he couldn't even stand. He was just somebody lying motionless on the bed. Bobby's family got increasingly worried. He was in and out of the prison's hospital, being reinfected with TB. The family encouraged a weak Bobby to apply for medical parole. He's very expensive. We pay him a lot while he was trying to get They said to us, everything's beyond them. Only if we can get letters from the California doctors that Bobby is chronic. Then they will process that. 
but without any letters that confirming that Bobby's chronic, it's not possible that uh, Bobby can get medical parola because since you've got TB and then the kidneys, those things are curable. They are not chronic. It's how they told us. A seriously ailing Bobby realized this was a fight to stay alive. Battling to get released on medical parole, Bobby now set his sight on appealing his conviction and sentence. He just said to me, Efina, pray God that I must be, I must win my, my appeal on the 8th of December, whatever all those and Don't worry about, don't worry anymore about uh, the medical parole. Just forget about it. I'm confident my appeal will be successful. And then the almost impossible. In December last year, a fragile Bobby Le Peng got his conviction and sentence set aside. Justice at last. Bobby could go home. He was lying in the green grass outside when we went and fetched him, of which that particular person was not supposed to be in, in prison. He was supposed to be in hospital. So he was lying there because He's no more a, a prisoner. They're releasing. Why was he lying on the grass? Was he waiting? No, he was sick. And he was waiting for us to come and fetch him. Why, do, why should they leave, leave him outside? At that? They were not supposed to do that. Why should, why should they leave, leave him lying there outside and yet he's sick? Shouldn't they do something? Like uh, government people? Shouldn't they take him at least to the hospital? That if he die, he must die in, in the good hands. Why should they do that? They were not supposed to do that. In this footage, a very weak Bobby is being treated in Helen Joseph Hospital. He was immediately brought here upon his release from jail. Bobby wanted to tell his story to special assignment. But by the time we reached him, he could no longer talk. <laughs> After the break, a dying man's fight for justice until the bitter end. By now, Bobby Le Peng was classified an innocent and free man. But this no longer mattered. I asked this nurse, I said, didn't you do something at least to boost him? He said to me, I did. I said, what did you do? He said to me, I did put the oxygen to, her, to him. And I said, and then he said, nothing uh, functioning, whatever, all those things. Then I just think of myself. I said, no, I think, don't think Bobby's still alive. You know? Because even the previous days, whenever we go there, we did have that impression that Bobby... She's not going to make it the way we see. On 18 January this year, a month after a high court ordered his release from jail, Bobby Le Peng died. Prison rights fighter Golden Miles Budu says the case of Bobby Le Peng is not a once-off tragedy in our criminal justice system. Look, Bobby's case is another tragedy. Okay, It should have never happened 17 years down the line in our democratic political new dispensation. Bobby's case was a very simple one. He was unlawfully arrested. He was maliciously prosecuted and he was illegally incarcerated for almost two years. Over the last 10 years, more than 11,000 inmates died of natural causes inside our prisons. These shocking figures are contained in the annual reports of the Judicial Inspectorate for Prisons. It also highlights overcrowded conditions, making our jails breeding grounds for highly contagious and potentially deadly diseases. He was complaining for a period of over two years that he was incarcerated in a communal cell, which was cramped, grossly overcrowded, 
and inmates were smoking from Dacha and any other kind of, of, of cigarettes. And some of them maybe were suffering from contagious diseases like TB, you know, and he was complaining that he could he please be incarcerated in a cell where there is non-smokers because he himself was a non-smoker. That never happened. And very, very soon he fell ill. Clutching to the remaining memories she has of her son, Bobby's family feels let down by a system they believe is deeply flawed. We have realized how cruel is justice. Because if Bobby was treated like Jackie Slibe, we could have Bobby around us today. Ironically, while a chronically sick Bobby was fighting for medical parole in Pretoria Central Prison, Former disgraced police chief Jackie Salebi was ordered to start his 15-year sentence for fraud at the same jail. But Salebi collapsed at home while watching the judgment being handed down in his appeal case. The incident sparked a media frenzy. Is it correct that the doctor has advised that he can't actually go into custody at this point? The doctor did release a medical report to that extent, yes. But that will be dealt with by correctional services from now on. Can you tell us what the medical report, the medical status is at least of your client? No, the family asked that it remain confidential, but it is a long-standing um, illness. Salebi is still being treated at this hospital amid wild speculation that he will be granted medical parole. The Le Peng family feels Bobby failed to get medical parole because he had no political connections. They didn't do it because Bobby is nobody. Silibe Day is his very first day when he was arrested. He, he didn't even go to Central Prisoner. Bobby did meet him in Central Prisoner. He talked to him and Silibe told him, he said, I'm not going to eat this food and I don't need any medication from this hospital, whatever. I'll be taken outside and definitely he was taken right to uh, Steve Big Hospital where he is even now getting the best. It's how we took it. Special assignment could not verify these claims. I suspect that he's just one of those inmates who are not known and he could be just become one of those statistics. You know, seemingly nowadays that you need to be known, you need to be connected. Uh, uh, as high as the um, Himalaya mountains and you need to have a bit of a background in order that your matter must receive the attention it deserves. King okay, the Minister, a letter, got it 20th of September, uh, 2011. Okay, uh, I currently need a help urgently. My brother named... Bobby's family remembers their desperate attempts to get the attention of the prison authorities. And it remains a bitter pill to swallow, knowing that his medical parole was never approved. They sent him to Kalafong Hospital on the 16th of September. When he was released, it, it was already too late because he was terminally ill. But why couldn't the system release him on medical grounds whilst he was waiting for his appeal to be approved or disapproved? This is a question that needs to be answered by the Department of Correctional Services. We do everything that would be done in a normal public hospital. In the case of, of, of these inmates, I would say it is unfortunate because there is always screening. Once you get sick, they screen you. And once it's determined that you, you have TP, you go to hospital. In fact, I've been in correctional facilities where in the hospital section itself, you also have a dedicated ward for people, for instance, who have uh this uh, which was common in the past few years nhi you would find people conf you know isolated from the rest of of the inmates and even from the rest of the patients in the hospital section after the break hundreds more terminally ill prisoners languish in jail This is the man that sparked the intense media scrutiny of the medical parole system and wide public interest in who exactly qualifies for sick parole. 
In 2008, Shabir Sheikh, former financial advisor of President Jacob Zuma, received a 15-year prison sentence for fraud. My heart is very at peace now. And I walk in my Lord's path. Okay? okay Keep sir, thank you. Here, a visibly slimmer Sheikh arrives to be taken to the Westfall Prison in Durban to start his sentence. But for almost two years, he spent most of his time at the prison hospital and this health facility for medical treatment. Here in a doctor's letter, Sheikh is diagnosed with systematic hypertension. Medical parole is recommended. Amid drive speculation that the process was rigged, Sheikh walked out of prison on medical parole. He spent a total of two years of his 15-year sentence behind bars. Special assignment received these pictures from inside Westville Prison, where Sheikh would have been incarcerated. 64 inmates share this cell. It's meant to hold 22. Here, inmates prepare to sleep on the floor. It's these cramped conditions that Sheikh escaped. But one dying man that remains trapped in its chambers is Louis Goumede. My brother was sentenced. Our brother Louis was sentenced in prison in August 2006. And this report is an assessment to the Abbas concerning his eligibility for any medical parole. Louis' sisters cling to this piece of paper as their last ray of hope to get their ailing brother released from jail. It's a letter from a prison doctor recommending Louis for medical parole. The official document is dated November 2009. It states that Louis is an AIDS patient on ARB treatment. But since this letter was written, nothing has come of Louis' medical parole application. He's been insisting that he wants to come out because he can see that he is going to die there. So we started, he, he told us that if we can get a lawyer for him, so he, maybe he can do something. So we're still going to see the lawyer. Special assignment also received these pictures from inside the medical ward of Westville Prison. Most inmates in this crowded space have TB. They also claim that the prison has run out of ARB medication since December last year. They are dying in front of him. They are also sick. So that is why he is scared and I think that is why his uh, health de deteriorates. Louis' 70-year-old mother battles to come to terms with what's happening to her son inside Westville Prison. Uh, they are affecting me if I show him very, very sick. That affects me because he is uh, my son. No, he was strong. I left him when I was like that. Now when I come to jail, I find him very, very sick. In 2008, Special Assignment brought you these shocking images from inside Modderby Prison, where sick inmates got very little medical attention. This critically ill inmate died a week after this footage was shot. Since these images were aired, seemingly little has changed inside our prisons. 
the new amended act for medical parole will see the appointment of a medical advisory panel to make final decisions about sick inmates. It says that uh, when you are released on medical or correctional supervision on medical grounds in the future, and you miraculously recover by the grace of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or by the grace of Allah, you will have to be recalled to come and do the remainder of your sentence. But that won't be retrospective. And there is a reason why we believe it won't be retrospective, because it won't then have any effect on our honorable, uh, very uh, sick uh, former offender, Mr. Shabir Sheikh. The new medical parole policy, one, will be gazetted, but also the appointment of the new panel of medical experts will also be on that gazette. So that now the policy will, a new policy will be in place, which would mean that effectively anyone, including an inmate, may initiate a process of application for medical parole. But amendment to the Sick Parole Act is little consolation for the Gumede family. They fear Louis will die in prison if he's not released soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I feel so sorry. So sorry to see him. He's sick like that. You want to take care of him, yeah? You want to take care of your son? Yes, I'll do. But for Bobby Le Peng's family, it's already too late. Bobby died a free man. But he died nevertheless. Now, what are your thoughts on the medical parole system? You can send us your comments via Twitter by using the hashtag special assignment. You can also Facebook or email us. And you also have a chance to call in on this matter on my radio show. That's on SAFM Radio, Friday, just after 2 p.m. Now, last week we brought you the story of how the rich and powerful prey on young homeless people and sexually exploit them. I picked out some comments. There are tweets from... Impo Mokubong, who said, I think this kind of exploitation is inhumane and sexual predators like these have no place in society. While Fabrizio Brazzali commented, I don't know why the government has no decent welfare for people that really need it. Well, that's it for tonight. Join us again next week when we point out the issues that matter.